Hi everyone. The Khufu ship is an intact full-size solar bark from ancient Egypt. It was sealed into a pit at the foot of the Great Pyramid of Pharaoh Khufu around 2500 BC, during the fourth dynasty of the ancient Egyptian Old Kingdom. Like other buried ancient Egyptian ships, it was apparently part of the extensive grave goods intended for use in the afterlife. The Khufu ship is one of the oldest, largest and best preserved vessels from antiquity. It is 43.4 meters, 142 feet long and 5.9 meters, 19 feet wide, and has been identified as the world's oldest intact ship, and described as a masterpiece of woodcraft that could sail today if put into a lake or a river. The ship was preserved in the Giza Solar Boat Museum, but was relocated to the Grand Egyptian Museum in August 2021. The history and function of the ship is not precisely known. It is of the type known as a solar barge, a ritual vessel believed by ancient Egyptians to carry the resurrected king across the heavens with the sun god Ra. According to Egyptian myth, when Ra became too old and weary to reign on earth he relinquished and went to the skies. Ra was said to travel through the sky on the barge, providing light to the world. Each twelfth of his journey formed one of the twelve Egyptian hours of the day, each overseen by a protective deity. When the sunset and twilight came he and his vessel passes through the Ahet, the horizon, in the west, and travel to the underworld. At times the horizon is described as a gate or door that leads to the Duat. There he would have to sail on the subterrestrial Nile and cross through the twelve gates and regions, with each hour of the night considered a gate overseen by twelve more protective deities. Every night enormous serpent Apophis, the god of chaos attempted to attack Ra and stop the sunboat's journey. After defeating the snake, Ra would leave the underworld, returning emerging at dawn, lighting the day again. He was said to travel across the sky in his falcon-headed form on the manned jet bark through the hours of the day, and then switch to the mesic tet bark in his ram-headed form to descend into the underworld for the hours of the night. The progress of Ra upon the manned jet was sometimes conceived as his daily growth, decline, death, and resurrection. The Khufu ship bears some signs of having been used in water, and it is possible that the ship was either a funerary barge used to carry the king's embalmed body from Memphis to Giza, or even that Khufu himself used it as a pilgrimage ship to visit holy places and that it was then buried for him to use in the afterlife. It contained no bodies, unlike northern European ship burials. The ship was one of two rediscovered in 1954 by Kamal El Malik, undisturbed since it was sealed into a pit carved out of the Giza bedrock. It was built largely of Lebanon cedar planking in the shell first construction technique, using unpegged tenons of Christ's thorn. The ship was built with a flat bottom composed of several planks, but no actual keel, with the planks and frames lashed together with half a grass and has been reconstructed from 1,224 pieces which had been laid in a logical, disassembled order in the pit beside the pyramid. The vessel may not have been designed for sailing, as there is no rigging, or for rowing, as there is no room. Its discovery was described as one of the greatest ancient Egyptian discoveries in Zahi Hawass's documentary Egypt's Ten Greatest Discoveries. Egypt's Ten Greatest Discoveries is a documentary on the Discovery Channel, featuring a list of the top ten discoveries of ancient Egyptian sites and artifacts which are of cultural significance to the country. It took years for the boat to be reassembled, primarily by the Egyptian Department of Antiquities chief restorer, Ahmed Youssef Mustafa. 1. Before reconstructing the boat, Mustafa had to gain enough experience on ancient Egyptian boat building. He studied the reliefs carved on walls and tombs as well as many of the small wooden models of ships and boats found in tombs. Mustafa visited the Nile boatyards of Old Cairo and Mardi and went to Alexandria, where wooden river boats were still being made. He hoped that modern Egyptian shipwrights had retained shipbuilding methods that would suggest how ancient Egyptians built their ships. Then he investigated the work of shipwrights who built in a different tradition. 
The Khufu ship was put on public display in a specially built museum at the Giza Pyramid Complex in 1982. The museum was a small modern facility resting alongside the Great Pyramid. The first floor of the museum took the visitor through visuals, photographs and writings on the process of excavating and restoring the boat. The ditch where the main boat was found was incorporated into the museum ground floor design. To see the restored boat, the visitor ascended a staircase leading to the second floor. In August 2021, the ship was relocated to the Grand Egyptian Museum. The design of the Khufu ship was quite ingenious in practice, because once the boat was placed in the water, the wood would swell up and the lashings along the inside structure would shrink, tightening the bindings even further and keeping the ship watertight for a pleasure cruise on the Nile. The construction method of this ship, and likely all early Egyptian ships, was also extremely practical, at least in one sense. The edge joining methods they used required nothing to be permanently fastened, so a ship could easily be taken apart, carried across dry land in a train of pieces, and then reassembled to be put back into the next body of water. Some historians suspect that this method was used by the Egyptians who ventured out into the Red Sea. Even after the Egyptians began building wooden ships, they still purposefully sought to evoke the style and shape of their first water vessels, the papyrus reed boat. The Khufu ship is a perfect example of this, as the curving ends are beautifully like the papyrus shape. We see this homage to papyrus not only in the ship's silhouette but also in the small decorative details of a papyrus bud carved into the ship's cabin columns, or in the imitation rope bindings of a papyrus reed raft that we see on the ship's prow. This ship then was constructed with an eye toward tradition, and few traditions are as closely tied with ancient Egypt as are its religious traditions. We can make a safe assumption that most, if not all, of these religious concepts were in the Egyptian mindset at the time that our pharaoh Khufu was buried in Giza. How do the pyramid texts line up with Khufu's ship though? Let's take a look. We've already seen in our look at Egypt how the Nile and its cycle of annual inundation shaped the terminology of Egyptian religious expression, and the pyramid texts give us a first glimpse at how the water factored in. As a whole, the pyramid texts were inscribed on the inside of a pharaoh's tomb to serve as directions for his dangerous journey into the afterlife. In the early Egyptian depiction, heaven was separated from the earth by an expanse of water. Upon death, the pharaoh's path to heaven lay across the water and the man to get him there was the ferryman in charge of the transportation. Those of you familiar with Greek mythology will no doubt note the similarity to Charon, the ferryman of Hades who carries souls of the newly deceased across the rivers Styx and Acheron and into the underworld. In the pyramid texts, utterance 263 references the two reed floats of heaven that are placed for re, that he may ferry over therewith to the horizon. Utterances 300 through 311 describe the ferryman and instruct the pharaoh that in order to gain passage on the ferry he needs to know the names of the ferryman and the parts of his boat. Though later iterations of the Egyptian afterlife evolved from this earliest written depiction, the theme of water and journeying through the afterlife via boat remain consistent. For instance, the coffin texts of the Middle Kingdom move toward a subterranean conception of the afterlife, ruled by Osiris and fraught with peril. This underworld was called Duot and was filled with lakes and rivers to be navigated by boat. With these two places, heaven and the underworld. We are brought finally to the Egyptian story of the sun god and his perpetual journey from light to dark, perhaps the underlying commonality in the different Egyptian views of the afterlife. The sun god, eventually called Ra, was said to travel in a boat of millions, so called because it needed to contain all the gods and all the souls of the blessed dead. In some later books depicting the underworld, Ra travels in two boats. As he traveled across the daytime sky, lighting the Egyptian world with his brilliance, the man jet was his ship, but when he descended below the horizon into the underworld, the Mesic Tet carried him through Juat to emerge again onto the morning horizon. This idea that the soul of the pharaoh could join with Ra, that the pharaoh might even be Ra himself according to some, this idea is what some have said is the best explanation for the two boats found next to Khufu's pyramid. 
Two boats, you ask? Well, yes, two boats. Remember earlier in the episode when I mentioned the discovery of two sets of stone slabs in 1954? The eastern pit yielded the Khufu ship that we've just briefly glimpsed, but the western pit was ignored in the intense focus on the Khufu ship's discovery. It wasn't until 1987 that an electromagnetic radar survey revealed the existence of a second boat in the western pit. In that same year archaeologists drilled into the pit to, to insert a tiny camera and take photos of the wooden planks laid out in an organized fashion. In 2008, that a team was able to raise over $10 million to dedicate to the restoration project. In 2011 workers finally began removing the covering stones, and even then it took another two years before the boat began to be removed. Only a few years ago, in June of 2013, removal began the roughly 600 pieces that scans revealed. So yes, the second ship is smaller than the first, and experts expect the restoration process to take at least another four years. However, the discovery of this second ship has bolstered those who feel that the Khufu ship was intended to carry Khufu into the afterlife. After all, two ships were needed, one for the day and one for the night, and if anyone would know how to piece the ship back together instructions included, it would be the sun god and his pharaoh, wouldn't it? Thanks for watching.